Today, we're gonna talk about water heaters and which can save you the most money. Heat pump, tankless, gas, and electric. Yippee! With water heaters being up to 20% of the cost of the energy in your house, you wanna make sure you're saving as much money as possible. Now, there's different type water heaters, and as homeowners, well, believe it or not, you don't have a whole lot of say so about what type water heater you have at your house, or when it comes time to change it out, most plumbers are just gonna to wanna to swap out with whatever you have. So, stay around to the end, and I'm gonna tell you about a new type of water heater that can save you up to 70% of the energy that you're currently spending. Okay, so first of all, you've probably got a standard gas or electric tank water heater in your house. Now, this has been the standard for many, many years. 30, 40, 50 gallons. I've even seen as big as 80 and 100 in residential homes. God, I've even seen homes with two 100 gallon water heaters. You know you've got a gas water heater if you've got a chimney on top, you've got your cold and hot inlet and outlet, and then you've got your TMP valve. Gas control valve on the front, where an electric water heater will just have two panels that the elements and thermostats are behind, your gas control valve sticks out on the front. The gas control valve in this is a big sign. If you've got a vent going up through the roof, you've got a gas water heater. Now, the way they're built, you've got your cold inlet, your dip tube right here that brings the cold water in at the bottom. Then you've got your burner assembly down underneath. And what it does is it, it's like a boiling pot. You've got a fire under the bottom of the tank. The fumes come up in the middle and they've got They've got this diverter in here that keeps pushing the heat out, that way it heats up from the inside too. So not just the fire underneath, that hot vent air coming up out circulates around in here and keeps the inside of it hot too. So it's not just heating at the bottom, it's actually heating all the way up and down. But the cost of gas and what it costs to run these things, that makes these one of the least efficient water heaters that there is. But just like anything else, you can look at the thickness, you can look at a lot of different things to try to get the most efficient that you can, which to me is always a smart idea. Okay, so the next one up is the electric. Again, electric's easy to identify. Normally right here on the top, you've got conduit or something coming in to supply your electricity to the tank. Then you've got your panels. So behind each one of these panels is a thermostat and a heating element if you have a dual element type heater, but most of them are these days. Now, man, I wanna say a special thanks out to Bradford White for supplying me with both of these cutaway water heaters. It is fantastic. It makes it really nice for me to show y'all what all's going on. Now, again, you've got your cold water dip tube. Every tank top water heater has an anode rod. And I highly suggest changing that out after your water heater's been installed for one year. This is gonna help make it last longer. That is a sacrificial anode rod. It literally sacrifices itself. If there's any nicks, chips, anything like that on the inside of the tank, it'll go out there and seal those off. That's why we don't flush water heaters after about four years if they've never been done. But you can see the heating elements here. So when there's a call for heat, literally the thermostat kicks on, charges the heating element, heats up the water from the inside. Of course, hot water rises. So the outlet on these Bradford Whites is right here at the top of the anode rod. Anode rods on other water heaters are just installed in the tank and there's just a dielectric nipple coming out. So that's where your hot water goes out. So this is the next up in efficiency level, going electric. Now they make electric tankless water heaters and I'm not gonna talk a lot about those because there's a lot to them. You've gotta normally, man, I've seen people have to install new panels, but you've normally gotta install multiple electrical lines in order to get enough electricity over to them. I'm not saying they're not good. I'm not saying it may not be worth it, but right now, I'm gonna talk about the most common ones. I want you to think about the efficiency of a gas or electric water heater. A gas water heater runs gas, like it says, you've got the vent pipe going out, and, well, it keeps that water hot all day long. Think about it. While you're in Mexico on the beach 
with your sister, your girlfriend, your wife, or all three of them, crazy for you. But if you're down there, you've got a tank top water heater at home that is continuously heating that water and keeping it hot the entire time you're gone. Now, a normal gas water heater cycles three to four times a day to keep that hot, depending on the insulation, the R factor around the water heater. Now, electric water heaters are about the same way. They've got a delta setting in there that when the water gets down to a certain level, the elements kick on again and generate electricity, heating that water back up. Believe it or not, gas is good. Gas gets the water hot and gas has a rapid recovery, but electric water heaters are just a little bit more efficient. So, man, if you've got gas, you may want to look at going what is even next, a tankless. Okay, so now coming up to the next level of efficiency, you get into the gas tankless water heater. Now, I love this. This is a Renai, it's the REU series. And I gotta tell you, these things are very efficient. What I love about a tankless gas water heater, they only kick on when there's a call for heat. So you've got your water inlet and outlet on the bottom, you've got your gas inlet on the bottom. If you've got a condensing unit, you've got your condensing drain on the bottom and your exhaust vent on top. You've got an intake air and an exhaust air up on top to help these things do what they do. Now, the things about installing a tankless gas water heater, you may have to upgrade your gas system. Now, if I would have installed it at my house, I had a long half inch line coming to my water heater, that would have had to be increased. Every plumber should know how to do a gas load calculation chart to figure this out. Is there enough BTUs at the heater to let it run without causing any problems anywhere else in the house? But your water comes in, it goes through everything, it goes through your heating chamber, and your heat exchanger is the biggest part of a tankless water heater. It's a very narrow passageway that this heat goes through and you've got super intense heat on it. So as this water is going through it, it's rapidly getting hotter and the way that tankless water heaters work, when you have the temperature set at a certain temperature, that controls how fast the water moves through. Then once it gets to the temperature, it's ready to go out and to where it needs. Now, these are not instant water heaters. If you've got a tankless, that does not mean if you turn on a faucet, hot water's already gonna be there. Now, they do make smart water heaters that know what time of day you use water and automatically circulate if you've got a comfort valve installed. So these really are an amazing product to have. They think for you, they have water ready when you're ready. And the good thing is, like I talked about a while ago, if you're at Mexico, uh, this thing is never kicking on because it's not using any water. So there's never a call for it. So gas tankless water heaters, to me, one of the most efficient solutions. Is it worth the upgrade? Well, we'll talk about those here in a moment. So next, and this is the big daddy, this is the heat pump water heater. I gotta tell you, man, these things, these have up to a 70% efficiency rating above a tank top water heater to heat your water heater. Now, look, they're bulky. You've got a lot of equipment in here, more like air conditioning equipment, to draw the heat out of the air. And it's funny because I didn't understand it until I became an HVAC technician, that there's actually ambient heat in the air each and every day, even when it's freezing, that can be pulled out, and the right equipment can pull the heat out of that air. So it literally pulls the heat out of the air and uses it to heat the water. Now this is an electric water heater, so you've got your thermostats in it, you've got your electrical connections, and you've got your control panel here to talk to it and tell it what you need, what your temperature should be set at, how you want this thing to work. Now, little differences on this, you've got a full port ball valve metal down on the bottom of it. I love that for draining it. You've got a condensate pump, so you've got your connections over here. You've got hot and cold connections on the top or down on the sides. You can have your cold go directly in the bottom, hot out of the top. You've got an electrical line over here for your condensation pump, and you've got your drain for it. Then you've got your normal TMP, just like the rest of the water heaters do. With them using 70% less energy to heat your water, and water being 20% of the energy of your house, 
These can literally save you a lot of money each and every year. So people ask me all the time, well, Roger, if I'm changing out my water heater, what do you recommend I put in? Unfortunately, I normally recommend to put in exactly what came out. If you've got an electric, go electric unless you want to upgrade to a heat pump. If you've got the room for it, if it's out in the garage, something like that, it could be a real big cost savings for you. Now these cost more money to purchase, so the install, it may be a little bit more. It's gonna be different to pipe. A lot of plumbers love just swapping out because they can just cut the line, pull out the water here, set the new one in, hook it right back up. This is not quite gonna be the same. And if you do have an electric water heater or even a tankless, gas type, you need to see, do you have an electrical outlet nearby? Because both of these are gonna require some power, either for the condensation pump or for the fans internally on the tankless gas water heater. So efficiency wise, if you can go the heat pump type and you've got an electric water heater there already, what a way to go. If not, tankless is gonna be your best bet. Then it gets down to maybe just installing with the original plumber installed. And by the way, your house was designed for that system, so there's normally not much to change. But if you go tankless or heat pump, you may have to add electricity outlets or upsize your gas line. But guys, when it comes to efficiency and saving money, now you know what water heater could be best for you. And if you love this video, or you know anybody thinking about changing a water heater, do me a favor and share this with them. This may help them think about saving more money. And if you wanna learn more about water heaters, check out one of these.